Chris, thank you. Welcome back to the program. Well, Rick Santorum lasted longer than anyone thought he would, but now the bruising internal struggle within the US Republicans for the presidential nomination has essentially come to an end. Rick Santorum has pulled out of the race, giving Mitt Romney a clear run. Here they both were overnight. We made a decision to get into this race at our kitchen table and against all the odds. And we made a decision over the weekend that while this presidential race for us is over for me and we will suspend our campaign effective today we are not done fighting i know a lot of folks are going to write maybe those even at the white house game over but this game is long 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 way from over we are going to continue to go out there and and fight to make sure that we defeat president barack obama this has been a uh, a good day for me uh, a uh, <laughs> He will continue to have a major role in the Republican Party, and I look forward to his work in helping assure victories for Republicans across the country in November. We've got to get that job done. Now they start saying nice things about each other. Well, Jeff Garrett is the director of the U.S. Studies Centre, joins us now. Jeff Garrett, thanks uh, for your time and uh, analysis on what's happened. If we can look back at this battle, though, between uh, Mitt Romney and Rick Santorum. Rick Santorum, the Christian conservative, uh, uh, appealing really to the Tea Party conservatives in the US as well. Did he succeed in dragging the Republicans to the right, given they've ended up with Mitt Romney after all? Yeah, I think, David, uh, Rick Santorum dragged on the contest much longer than anyone would have expected, and he's dragged Mitt Romney to the right, as you said. Of course, Romney now, as always happens at this point, will pivot to the centre, but I think Romney does look today like a pretty weak candidate against Barack Obama, who, of course, should be really vulnerable because of the state of the US economy, the still parlous state of the US economy. Well, we did see, however, a, a bruising battle four years ago between Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, and everyone said that was going to damage uh, whoever won it, their chances at the general election. Barack Obama, of course, went on to win that. Is this really going to hurt uh, Mitt Romney come election day in November? Yeah, it's so interesting. I think the Republicans decided after 2008 that they wanted to draw out, drag out their primary campaign because Hillary Clinton versus Barack Obama swallowed all of the media attention and then Obama used it as the springboard really to the presidency. But Obama Clinton, you know, looked like those famous Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier fights. It was one, two and three. They were all must see TV. Romney versus the non Romneys has really been bored Boring. Everyone is, has started to use words like tedious to describe it. So I don't think it's going to be a springboard for Romney. And, and of course, what the campaign has shown us thus far is Romney's real vulnerabilities. The Republican opponents of Mitt Romney have written Obama's script, I think, for attacking him. Well, they've certainly done a lot of that in recent months. Uh, what now for Rick Santorum? He has uh, uh, done better than anyone expected. What does he do with that political capital, uh, that, that name brand that he has now? Are we going to see him run again, do you think, or even uh, pop up uh, in, in the interim before the next election in four years' time? What's, what's in store for Rick Santorum's future? You know, I, I, I might say with a bit of a grin on my face, I think what's in store for Rick Santorum is a book contract, a book tour, and a, and a job on Fox News. You know, that's what Sarah Palin did. Uh, that's what Mike Huckabee did. I think that's what Rick Santorum will do. You know, he could never have been the nominee of the party. He lost his Senate race, uh, his Senate seat in uh, Pennsylvania 10 years ago um, with, a, with a terrible loss. I don't think he really has a future in national politics. And what that tells us is that the republic the conservative side of the republican party was so opposed to the idea of Mitt Romney as their nominee that it was anybody but Romney and Rick Santorum the unlikely Rick Santorum was the last one of those non Romney standing so what uh, now how would you describe characterize uh, the state of the tea party movement uh, in in the united states are they uh, a force to be reckoned with still. Are they going to get behind Mitt Romney? Are they going to turn out to vote for him? 
Well, I think they're absolutely a force to be reckoned with. Uh, what I would expect to happen, though, with the basically the Republican base now, is that it'll move from where it's been in the Santorum era, which was really about social issues, back to the economic ones. Uh, you know, there's a guy in Congress, Paul Ryan, who heads the Budget Committee, who really wants a slash and burn of the U.S. budget. That's going to be a big fight with Obama in uh, August and September, and that'll be really a, a Tea Party enthused and, uh, and uh, strengthened Republican side. Of course, what Obama's done in the past is to defend the American welfare state against the Republican right, and that's played well for him. Whether it'll continue remains to be seen. Probably more than anything else, it'll depend on that critical number in the US, the unemployment rate. Which was showing signs of improving, but uh, some of that uh, growth has, has slowed off a little. Can I ask you about the other minor players in the Republican race, uh, Newt Gingrich and Ron Paul. What's the status of, of their campaigns now? I mean, uh, are they completely out of the picture? Well, this for both of them, I think this is really their last big gasp on the national stage. So Newt Gingrich can stay in the race because he's got one supporter, a guy who owns casinos in Las Vegas and Macau, who's been bankrolling his campaign. So Newt can stay as long as Adelson will continue to support him. Um, with respect to Ron Paul, you know, Ron Paul has been flat for many months. I think there was always this notion that maybe if Ron Paul was running at 10 or 15 percent in the Republican nomination, he could then use that as a justification to run as a third party candidate in the general election, you know, the way Ralph Nader did from the le left or Ross Perot did from the right back in 1992. But everyone I talk to says that Ron Paul won't do that because he's got a son, Rand Paul, who's in the Senate, in the Republican Party, and if Ron Paul ran against uh, Mitt Romney, essentially his son would be alienated from the Republican Party, and the father uh, apparently is not willing to do that to his son so I think there so I think both Newt Gingrich and Ron Paul are just going to ride off into the sunset not quietly but that's what's going to happen to them just finally uh, Jeff Garrett you mentioned earlier that Mitt Romney won't quite have the uh, electrifying uh, uh, or the ability to electrify the electric in the way Barack Obama did four years ago given there is no big debate here about the future of the Iraq war or even Afghanistan uh, it's going to be about the economy. Is there a danger? This could be a pretty boring election campaign in uh, come November. Uh, I, I think it might be a boring campaign because it will be all about the economy, stupid. But I think, uh, you know, from Australia, we should be looking forward to two big things. First of all, the US Supreme Court seems poised to say that Obamacare, Obama's biggest domestic reform, his health care reform, is unconstitutional in the US. That could happen in June or July. How the president reacts will be critically important. And then second, there'll be another big spat over money. Uh, the debt ceiling will probably be reached again. The U.S. has got to pass a budget. And what the U.S. does typically in that environment is starts talking about a government shutdown. So in a presidential election year, those are two massive events. And then there'll be every month the job numbers. What happens with the job numbers? The better they are, the better the chances for Obama. The worse the job numbers, the better it looks for Mitt Romney. Jeff Garrett from the U.S. Study Center. Good to talk to you. Thanks for that. Pleasure, David.